All right, continuing on, making our way through these chapters in the book of Exodus, what we call sort of a conversational exposition. Mm -hmm. I, I'm enjoying this. Yeah, it's been fun. Okay, good. Let, let's keep going here. Exodus chapter 21, uh, let's read the first several verses here, starting at verse 28. It says, If an ox gores a man or a woman to death, then the ox shall surely be stoned, and its flesh shall not be eaten, but the owner of the ox shall be acquitted. But if the ox tended to thrust with its horns in times past, and it has been made known to this owner, and he has not kept it confined, so that it has killed a man or a woman, the ox shall be stoned, and its owner also shall be put to death. Whoa. If there is imposed on him a sum of money, then he shall pay to redeem his life. Whatever, whatever is imposed on him, whether it has gored a son or gored a daughter, according to this judgment, it shall be done to him. If the ox gores a male or female servant, he shall give to their master 30 shekels of silver, mm -hmm. and the ox shall be stoned. Wow. Well, you know, we read a section like this, and I can just imagine somebody reading through this passage in their one-year Bible, and their eyes glazing over, mm -hmm. and their <laughs> eyelids beginning to flutter, and oxes and gore. This is when you go for a second cup of that, coffee to that's stay That's right. <laughs> you just went, uh -huh. Now, I, I think what we got to understand is, look, we, we, we got to understand, in our culture, we're pretty far distant from this. Mm. Uh, when's the last time you plowed with an ox? I'm thinking, uh, yeah, never. Yeah, exactly, mm. never. I mean, we're so distant from this, but if you can just use your imagination a little bit and put yourself back in the sandals of an ancient Israelite, this is big stuff. Mm. Your ox is your livelihood as a farm, farmer. That's like your tractor. Mm. You don't have a tractor, you can't do your business out in your fields. You can't plow, you can't arrange, you can't plant, you can't do what you need to do. And so this is absolutely essential stuff for the ancient Israelite farmer, and almost all of the economy was built upon agriculture. Mm -hmm. So look, I'm going to allow um, that we feel distant from this, but look, let's use our imagination here and realize that uh, this, this was... was uh, a very real and important thing for them mm. to get resolved. So here's the situation. An ox gores a man or a woman to death. What do you do with that ox? Kill it. Kill it. Stone it. Now notice this. The ox, ox is stoned, but what happens to the owner? Verse 28, the owner of the ox shall be acquitted. Um, condition, I mean, the condition on that is if the ox has no pre-existing prior history, prior history right. to exactly. goring people, aggression. Exactly. So if there isn't that, then the owner can't be held. There's kind of an issue of intent or neglect here, perhaps? Exactly so. And what we see here is, again, the brilliance of the Law of Moses mm -hmm. in these instructions to judges building principles for yeah. case law. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know how often this exact case would right. come before an Israelite judge. I'm not going to say never, but certainly you know, more so these would establish principles. Oh, the judge says, okay, something's happened, something terrible has happened. Mm. In proportioning the punishment, I've got to look for evidence of neglect, evidence of uh, negligence, mm. you know, the, the, intention, the, the yeah. intention, these kind of things. Mm -hmm. And so putting all that together to say, okay, if, if the ox has no history, it, it's determined that the owner of the ox is not at fault at all, the ox is killed, which, by the way, was a serious loss to the owner. Yeah. Serious. The ox is killed, but the owner survives. But the owner, in that situation, the owner doesn't reap any benefit from the killing of the ox, right? It's not like he gets the money or he doesn't, doesn't get like the money, doesn't the get the meat. Yeah, no, no, no just, that's it's right. It's just that's a, right. It's a yeah. total yeah. It, loss. By the way, and boy, I, I wonder how much we should get off into this. This really establishes something that our society is beginning to lose. It's really showing the distance between human life mm. and animal life. Mm. In other words, if an animal kills a human, that animal's dead, no matter what, and nobody benefits from it. Yeah. And it, it's a way of God showing and sort of lifting up the value of human life. And look, we, we live in a culture where well, people love their pets, and great. God bless. I mean, pets are a good thing, and it's, it's a wonderful <laughs> thing for people to love their pets, and it gives a lot of joy into a person's life, and, that, and that, that's wonderful. We don't complain. But as long as that person understands, there's a huge difference between the value of animal life and the value of human life. Now, I'm not saying necessarily bring the value of animal life down, but make sure the value of human life is up to where it's supposed to be. Mm. 
So what if the owner is guilty? And it, this was sort of a you know, problematic ox who would you know, thrust about with its horns from mm -hmm. time to time and, and maybe had a, a, I don't want to yeah. talk about it, had a criminal record. You know, what, then, then what do you do with the owner? It says there that its owner shall also, also shall be put to death. If there is imposed on him a sum of money, then he shall pay to redeem his life. Right. So it's either he's put to death, but if there is some sort of ransom, some sort of payment that he can pay to free himself, that's imposed on him, and he can pay that. Which often was the case. Right. Which often was right. the case that uh, in many times, uh, especially in sort of a property or injury right. kind of thing in Israel, mm -hmm. um, if a person's life was required, a monetary settlement would be made but it would be the value of a life in a monetary settlement. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, when it says there in verse 32, if the ox gores a male or female servant, he shall give to their master how much money? Hmm. 30 shekels of silver. Okay, so that was the price of a servant. The price of a free man isn't detailed here, but the price of a servant is regarded as 30, 30 shekels. shekels, 30 pieces of silver. Where do we find that number coming up somewhere else? Wow. Judas himself, Judas Iscariot, traded uh, Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. The price of a slave. Hmm. That's how Judas regarded Jesus. Now, wow. he didn't regard Jesus as a servant in the right kind of way, but sort of a debased slave. Now, mm -hmm. it, it is significant, though, if we want to get back to this Old Testament example, it shows that even in Israel, the slave was still a man. Yeah. His blood brought blood guilt and had to be atoned for. It's also interesting, is that this doesn't let the owner off the hook claiming, I had nothing to do, I don't know anything about That's it. Right. And it just, I mean, mm -hmm. this goes back to the intent and neglect. I mean, if he's mm -hmm. neglecting what's right in front of his face, he's going to be paying the price for it. It's one of the things yeah. I love about the law of Moses. Man, it's concerned for justice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Things need to be done right. Mm -hmm. You know, if there's wrongs, you've got a judicial system, it's got to be set mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. And look, I, I guess I'm not in a place to know how much of our judicial system is good or bad or not. I know sometimes it gets it right, sometimes it doesn't. But I do know this, God has a passion for justice, yeah. that things be set right. Mm -hmm. And I like the idea that he's, he's holding men responsible for their actions. You know, I, really, I like that a lot. It, you, you're just not off the hook. Yeah. It, well, crazy ox, who knew what he was going to do? Yeah. No, there's a price you're going to pay. Mm -hmm. you, you're going to at least pay with the loss of your ox, yeah. which was a precious thing, mm -hmm. uh, or, or the, the punishment by even more severe. Hmm. All right, let's wrap up this chapter. Uh, Nate, why don't you read that section starting at verse 33. And if a man opens a pit, or if a man digs a pit and does not cover it, and an ox or a donkey falls in it, the owner of the pit shall make it good. He shall give money to their owner, but the dead animal shall be his. If one man's ox hurts another's, so that it dies, then they shall sell the ox, the live ox, and divide the money from him, and the dead ox they shall also divide. Or if it was known that the ox tended to thrust in times past, and his owner has not kept it confined, he shall surely pay ox for ox, and the dead animal shall be his own. All right, these laws just seem to follow up on yeah. the point you made before about the responsibility that an owner has mm. over his property. He can't just blame the ox, um, mm. or, or I'm digging a pit, and somebody, you know, uh, an ox falls into it. I got to make it good somehow. Yeah. What, why would they dig a pit? What, what would be the whole reason why somebody might dig a pit? Well, in store, store water, maybe. I mean, if you want to store water, water store grain. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they dug pits to be traps for wild animals. Oh, wow. um, obviously, you know, never to trap an ox. You don't. You don't mm -hmm. have to trap an ox. You just go out and get it. Yeah. But no, it. it uh, so whatever reason somebody dug a pit, it, if the ox fell into it, it had to be set right. And same thing, verse 35, if a man's ox hurts another so that it dies, then they shall sell the live ox and divide the money from it. Interesting, a little different from the verse that we read previous where there was no, uh, you know, we would sell, kill the ox and there was no, no gain from it. This well, is because that gain. was ox on human crime. Right, this, this is, is ox, ox on, on ox crime. crime so which sort of has a different... whole other crime. <laughs> crime. Man. Ox on ox. You know, I... I I find it funny, you know, and we're laughing about it, and it is kind of funny. But, you know, we're just, it's funny to us because we're so far yeah. separated from a agrarian society. All this stuff about donkeys and ox yeah, and, and like, such like this. Not long ago, I was teaching through the uh, book of Genesis for our Bible college class, and I, I saw it all afresh 
with the sons of Israel, how concerned they were about their donkeys. Hmm. Like they, they go to Israel and they're complaining about Joseph or something like this, and they say, and, and they say something that I'm paraphrasing. They say, and, and he's going to kill us and our donkeys. And I'm like, you know, if they kill you, what do you care about your donkeys? But no, I mean, but it just showed these were agrarian hmm. people. This, your, your, your donkeys, your oxen, important stuff. And so that's why there had to be laws to regulate all this, because God cared about this. And, and for a struggling Israelite farmer, having an ox might make the difference between starvation or uh, success for his family. So he had to have the right tool to do his job. Again, again like we've been, we've been saying, the fact that our God, he cares. Yes. He's not so far removed that he's just distant and remote and, and just this real hands-off creator. No, he's involved. He cares about our needs, our, our, our desires, our wants. He cares deeply about the principle of fairness. Mm. But you can also tell him, this is wonderful in the law, he also cares deeply about the person, yeah. the individual. It's not as if God is just concerned with justice as an abstract principle, mm. but he cares about individual people, that individual yeah. farmer who every day wakes up and says, I gotta make enough food, I gotta grow enough crops mm -hmm. to feed my family through the next winter. God cares about that man and that he's taken care of and he has what he needs to provide for his family. Mm -hmm. It's a great display of the care and the love of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, God hasn't stopped having that love and care. You know, and I, I, I know that this business about oxen and all this seems pretty far to people. Wouldn't we want to communicate to everybody who's listening to this or watching this? God cares. He cares deeply about your needs. He, mm -hmm. he cares about the things that trouble you, even if other people think them to be irrelevant. God cares, and he wants to be the difference in those things. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, we'll come back at this and start into the next chapter as we break apart piece by piece, in depth, this uh, law concerning uh, judges in ancient mm -hmm. Israel.